Thank you for your interest in high-power air gap style connectors. In this video, we will show different methods to properly clean air gap connectors. Air gap style connectors for high-power applications cannot be cleaned by conventional methods such as wiping the connector end face. The cleaning process is not as trivial as cleaning standard connectors. Lens tissue and swabs must not be used to clean the fiber end face. The fiber tip overhanging in the air gap section of the connector ferrule will break under pressure from the wiping process. Loose dust particles can easily be removed with ionized compressed air. The static neutralized air will keep the fiber end face from attracting other particles during the cleaning process. Use of compressed air dusters are not recommended. Air dusters contain refrigerant or propellant that can contaminate the fiber end face, making it almost impossible to provide proper cleaning. When the contamination cannot be removed with air, ultrasonic cleaning and or carbon dioxide cleaning can be used. For air gap connectors, an ultrasonic cleaner system with two beakers is recommended. One beaker contains 99.9% .9 purity isopropyl alcohol without any additives. The other beaker contains deionized water. Other solvents, such as acetone, are not recommended since the acetone can damage other components of the connector. The ultrasonic frequency should be set at a high frequency, such as 80 kHz or above, and at the power at 50% or more for heavy contamination. To clean the connector end, dip a few millimeters of the connector ferrule tip into the isopropyl alcohol beaker and activate the ultrasonic cleaner for about one minute. Switch the connector to the deionized water beaker without delay before the isopropyl alcohol can evaporate. Leave the connector soaking for about one minute. Remove the connector tip from the deionized water and immediately blow the connector tip dry with ionized or nitrogen airflow. Hold the air nozzle at a slight angle with respect to the connector tip. The air pressure or distance of the connector tip from the air nozzle should be adjusted according to the fiber size so that the air pressure does not damage the fiber. The ultrasonic cleaning process can be repeated several times to remove any leftover contamination. Note that heavy contamination may require soaking the connector tip for several minutes. Isopropyl alcohol and the deionized water should be replaced regularly to ensure their cleanliness. Carbon dioxide cleaning is highly recommended for high power air gap connectors as it removes contamination and film residues invisible to the naked eye. It can be used in conjunction with ultrasonic cleaning for heavily contaminated fiber end faces. We begin at the front panel of the OzPen. Here we have the power switch to turn the machine on the heater control knob, the thrust control knob, pressure gauge, snow control valve, and the snow indicator light. The heater controls the temperature of the propellant gas. You can increase and decrease the temperature by simply turning the knob. The hotter the propellant, the finer the particles of snow that will exit the nozzle. Finer snow particles allow for cleaning smaller size contamination. The cooler the propellant, the larger the particles of snow that will exit the nozzle. Larger snow particles allow for faster removal of contamination. You will need to find a balance with the particular contamination in your application. For typical contamination of dust or oils in fond fiber optic connectors, a typical starting point would be 50 to 100 degrees Celsius. Here we have ours set to 100 degrees. For heavier contamination, a lower temperature setting of 50 degrees to completely off can be used as well. It is possible to turn the heater on so high that the snow fully sublimates as it exits the nozzle. This is easily solved by turning down the heater. Your OZ panel will have a metal braided tubing extending from the front panel of the nozzle. There is an easy feedback mechanism. The braided tubing will feel warm to the touch if you have the heater on. If the braided tubing becomes excessively hot, consider reducing the heater setting. Next, we have a thrust control and pressure gauge. By activating either side of the foot pedal, a propellant will begin to flow. In this case, we have the pressure set to approximately 40 psi or about 3 bar, a good suggested starting point. 
In order to adjust the thrust, the front knob needs to be unlocked by pulling the knob out. You will notice that there is an orange indicator ring that can be seen when it is unlocked. Now you are free to adjust the pressure up and down and returning back to the original setting. Once you have set the thrust, you can push the knob back in to lock in the setting. We recommend having the propellant flowing while adjusting the pressure in order to see the changes in real time. Pressing the foot pedal activates the composite flow of carbon dioxide and propellant. The snow indicator light turns on when this happens. The onset of snow spray may be delayed as the liquid carbon dioxide needs to work its way through the system. The system was not used for over an hour, and a slight delay occurs before the snow starts exiting the nozzle. It is safe to touch the snow flow, but continue to move your hand around in, while in the flow. A frost burn may occur if you hold your hand in one position for too long. Once the pedal is released, the propellant turns off and the snow indicator light turns off. Residual carbon dioxide will continue to flow out. This residual flow should not be used for cleaning. Subsequent activations of the snow will have little to no delay. Here we have a close-up of the nozzle and snow control valve. Gently turning the snow control valve clockwise reduces the snow flow to off. Turning the snow control valve counterclockwise returns the snow flow back to the original. And by continuing further counterclockwise, the snow flow increases to maximum. We will return the snow flow back to the original by turning clockwise again. We recommend a lean flow of snow, as shown in the video. This setting is typically within the first quarter turn of the snow control valve. Using too little snow will require a longer time to clean the part, and using too much snow will waste carbon dioxide and may cause condensation to form on the part. When using a higher temperature setting, you may need to increase the snow flow to acquire a lean flow of snow, and when using a lower temperature setting, you may need to decrease the snow flow to again reach a lean flow. The foot pedal has two actuators. The left side turns on only the propellant. The right side will have both the propellant and carbon dioxide flow. The recommended technique to clean is to press the right hand side down for snow, holding it down until you are completely cleaning the item, and then switching over to the propellant side only while the residual carbon dioxide peters out. At the nozzle side it will look like this. The difference is that the propellant only at the end allows for the clean and dry environment for your part to dry out in. You will notice that the pressure gauge shows propellant is flowing, whereas before, the pressure gauge was at zero. We will demonstrate the basic cleaning technique on a high power air gap connector. This high power connector has a freestanding fiber in the center, so wiping any contamination off is not possible. This is an example of an intricate item that cannot be cleaned by using everyday methods. Here is a close-up of the nozzle. Push the snow pedal to turn the snow on, and once the snow flow has stabilized, introduce the connector approximately 1-2 to two inches from the nozzle. Feel free to translate the item in a plane, as well as tilting the item. The cleaning process is quick. We have switched over to the propellant only side now, and are keeping the connector in the clean and drive environment only. We will show that again in real time shortly. Here you see a typical setup of a NOS pen. The tabletop unit, with nozzle, inspection microscope, and display. You can see a contaminated fiber tip on the screen. We will try to blow off the contamination with air only. And you can see that the fiber is still quite dirty. So we will use the Oz pen in real time. As you can see, by using the OzPen's non-contact cleaning method, the high power connector has been cleaned. Here are some simple pointers that will help in getting the fastest and easiest cleaning with the OzPen. If you have the snow flow too high or hold the item too close to the nozzle tip for too long, a dry ice frost will coat the part. This dull white buildup stops the cleaning action from reaching the surface to be cleaned. You do not want this frost to happen. In order to avoid this, you can 
reduce the snow flow, or move the item further away from the nozzle tip. When the item has frosted up, you can switch over to the propellant only side of the foot pedal to help the frost sublimate away. You will see that the frost sublimates off very quickly. The positioning of the surface you wish to clean relative to the nozzle tip is the most important factor. Typically, the surface is normal to the spray. You can tilt the item to be clean to help reach the nooks and crannies of an intricate surface. You can also move the item towards and further away from the nozzle tip to have stronger bursts of cleaning. You can also combine and do both at the same time. Air gap connector metal caps are important in keeping the fiber and face clean. Several styles exist for FC and SMA connectors. One thing to remember is that dirty caps will always recontaminate fiber tips. They must be cleaned as well before use. To clean a metal cap, use a lint-free swab. Dampen the swab with isopropyl alcohol. Place the dampened swab in the metal cap and rotate it several times to remove all dirt. Blow the metal cap dry with ionized or nitrogen airflow. Once done, screw the metal cap back onto the air gap connector. For more information about high power air gap style connectors, please visit our website at www.ozoptics.com slash products slash high power html. And for the OzPen at www.ozoptics.com slash products slash OzPen.html.